okay we are live okay guys so a big 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 welcome to everyone and of course it's such a delight to you know see everyone uh, it really energizes you know the whole uh, atmosphere here so thank you very much for this again and like everybody knows uh, the topic today is siv i hope everybody here knows what is siv otherwise you should not be here Okay, I guess we lost Abi. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry. So there's a. It might happen, you know, that I get uh, logged out. So uh, uh, one thing is that uh, KK is going to be here, and uh, Vanik is also here. Others are a little busy, so I'm going to ask uh, these guys to share some experiences that involve, you know, that okay, you know, the SIV really helped me. so let's start the session the uh, session is to decode siv uh, the idea is that you know to clear all the cobwebs and all you know misapprehensions and doubts and uh, you know uh, abhi uh, i guess you we can't hear your questions first of all to you like what, what what doubt do you have what question comes to your mind Uh, regarding siv um, because as we know that i personally feel that siv is a very uh, useful uh, tool to upgrade your skills and it can give you a real confidence uh, develop your skills in terms of uh, you know understanding glider behavior much better and uh, controlling your glider much better and improving your reactions in times of you know uh, extreme situations much much better off so as you know siv stands for simulation the incident and wall it is translated in english as simulation of incidents in flight and uh, i come from a air force background and uh, ashish sir is also here when we do machine flying uh, we do very early Uh, learn about stalls and spins and such maneuvers you know to understand the limitations of the aircraft that we are flying and i think it is same uh, applies to you know our uh, paraglider it is good to know you know the 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 extremes the the flying analog of our you know aircraft and siv is you know the best kind of tool to uh, understand that <clears throat> however i'm sure there are a lot of questions regarding you know, siv when to do it why should i do it is it necessary there are pilots you know really good pilots who never done an siv but are still flying etc so i'm here today to share you know uh, my experience of uh, all these years of training uh, you know pilots in siv so let's dive in right away and i'm open to start the q and a session so please feel free it's for you so yes we can start <clears throat> anybody who likes to ask a question okay uh, bhavin uh, you can unmute and go for it uh my question is uh, so like you mentioned when should when is the right time to do an siv how many hours uh in terms of hours maybe how many hours should a pilot have to uh, consider thinking about an siv or where should one a pilot be in his learning or her learning journey to to decide uh, that okay now i can go for an siv what should the mindset be what should the skill level be yeah okay okay this is a very common question globally for all pilots so when is a good time to do the siv and what kind of skill level should i have and what kind of a mindset should i have to do a siv course okay so to begin with uh, number 1 uh, it will vary from pilot to pilot okay somebody is ready for it at you know 15 20 hours somebody super enthusiastic comes from a adventure sport background uh, we, he can do like you know after 10 15 hours as well 
for somebody it may be 20 30 40 so it will vary from pilot to pilot okay um, i recommend that you do it early than later because uh, like in my case i did siv really late because there was no siv before and i had formed certain habits and then i had to unlearn those habits to develop new habits which were more useful that i learned in an siv course so earlier is better than later the second part of your question um what is the mindset and what are the skill sets that i should have you know to do an siv course that's really good so first of all you should have become an autonomous pilot okay which means you know your gear really well you have uh, really uh, worked out your launches you can launch in different conditions you are very autonomous on the launch weak winds strong winds little bit of tailwind crosswind strong wind you are able to handle your launches and you are pretty autonomous on that and same goes with landing number 2 the mindset you should be feeling really good and confident about uh, your flying and you have a sense of you know hunger or go you know like an sri kind of excites you oh my god wow you know playing with the glider a little bit and you know understanding the full range of my brake travel and this kind of thoughts this kind of mindset means that you are ready you know for an siv course if you are not confident if it is feels like you no know, no maybe i should wait you should wait okay so if you are feeling positive excited you've got some good flying hours where you have felt you know good about being in the air the feeling kind of mindset that is perfect for siv you should be excited about it and you are hungry to learn more about your glider that's uh, really necessary to get maximum value you know out of the siv course because there have been cases where people have i must also do it then i'm pushing it you know and then when i go i can scare myself because i'm doing it prematurely i'm not really ready and that can actually put me back it can be a setback actually there have been cases where people have done sav and after the sav they really scared of flying and they don't feel like you know flying and they become like really little nervous about flying so it's really important to choose when to do it and like i said the mindset is necessary and the skill set is necessary mindset which is positive a little hungry excited and skill set that you're autonomous and you are to launching on your own you're doing your flying you're landing really well and i think that kind of sums it up does it uh, satisfy your question uh, uh, bhavin or is there more to it uh no i think that's uh, yeah gives me a good sense of what is required thank you yeah in terms of flying us i would say you know like 30 40 hours to 100 hours uh, is a good time but it will vary from pilot to pilot really you know the mindset and uh, the skill set if you have them and you're excited then woo, go for it it's the most fun course i would say I want okay to ask a question please yes please yes ritu ma'am how often after doing first time how often should you uh, do it again like uh, should be doing it again and again or should one or twice is okay okay that's another brilliant question actually uh, how often should you be doing siv well first of all uh, the siv uh, can last quite a long time okay because the learning is quite a lot and it will again depend on the pilot like you know like if you are feeling stuck a little bit in your flying if you bought a new glider if you feel that you know i think i need to do it again because you know those things i've not really got a full handle on it i think uh, i should do it again so um i would say there are 
situations where are signs when you know you could you know think of doing it again so number one uh, like when i buy a new glider you know i want to know more about this glider i need to be comfortable with this glider let me go for an siv this could be one reason number two uh, you know uh, SIV training is evolving all the time. If I did SIV a long time back, I better do one now because things have changed. Glider designs have changed. Uh, techniques have changed. So it's a good idea to do, you know, an SIV. Number three, I'm feeling a little stuck in my flying. And I think, you know, I need to, you know, get more understanding of my glider behavior. And I didn't really understand when I got into that situation. Uh, maybe it's time to, you know, do another SIV course. If you're enjoying SIVs, that's a very good sign. Then, okay, you know, I want to do one more. One can do one in a season as well. After some time, uh, when you reach a level where you can practice these maneuvers on your own, then not necessarily you need to do an SIV course because you can, you know, do stuff on your own. Uh, even, you know, stalls, you can, you know, you have the confidence, you've done them in 50, 100 times, and you can stall and recover on your own. You then may not need, need not come for an SIV course. So these are the things that you know uh, will tell you that yes, okay, maybe another one is on call. Uh, you want to upgrade your skills. Uh, you want to learn particular maneuvers, for example. You know, I'm going to be recommending people to learn uh, and uh, wing overs, for example. It is one of the key maneuvers to know the level of a pilot. So and you cannot crack wing overs in one SIV, no chance. Uh, it takes maybe a couple of them and a lot of practice from you to really crack wing overs. So one could go with a specific mindset as well. And uh, SIV, like I said, are evolving. You can come you know, with a specific goal that you, know, you tell your instructor that this is what I want to do and I want to focus on this. You know what you want. And the instructor says, okay, we focus on this and then we just do that. And then you're happy with what you want. You got what you wanted and you can you know, progress with this. Okay, did I answer you, Ritu? Any uh, more questions regarding this? No, thank you very much, Avi. So, uh, I do remember your SIV uh, we had done. So, uh, maybe, you know, you can come and, you know, uh, let's progress from where we left. If you're excited about it, if you feel, oh, yeah, let's go and have some fun. If you're excited about it. But if you're not up to it, then, then it's not a good idea. No, I, I'm excited about it. Okay, yeah. I know. <laughs> no. Even I'm thinking of uh, doing the thing once again. Uh, who, 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 who's I, talking? I was thinking, uh, Ashtosh, I was also thinking that uh, we, I would, we would also repeat the SIV again. Okay, okay. Yeah, very welcome. And, uh, you know, we will uh, go. Like, SIVs now are not like, you know, just maneuvers. We focus on the pilot. We focus on the pilot's progress, and uh, we focus on the mental aspect, and we design it as per your progress. Not like ticking the boxes. We did this exercise. We did this exercise. We did. Are you happy? Have you got what you wanted from this particular exercise? Or oh, we do it again. So it's more pilot centric rather than maneuver centric to get more value out of it. You should feel whoa, yes, you know, I I got what I wanted and more. Yeah. Avi, I think uh, you will have a lot of signups now that you have a wind stored SIV and you have, I think, a better takeoff at Bilaspur. I used to shoot bricks on the takeoff more than the maneuvers. So, so I think it will solve a lot of, uh, just take one apprehension out of the way, uh, either if you're doing it in a better takeoff at Bilaspur or winch. Uh, we are not able to hear you very clear. Jadit, can you repeat and uh, just check your volume somehow? Hey, is this better, Avi? Yeah, go on, like, we'll see. Yeah, no, I was saying that uh, now that you have a winch stored SIV over the lake and you have a better takeoff uh, at Bilaspur, it may be actually, you know, you take out one part of the anxiety moment in an SIV, which was the takeoff. I used to feel more anxious on the takeoff more than the, the maneuvers. So so I'll, I think you'll have a lot of signups now of people wanting to do it again every year. Absolutely. Absolutely. I am really happy. I hope everyone knows here. I shared some pictures uh, some time back. I can share them again that the launch on Bilaspur is five star now. So they have really worked on it. 
it's 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 nice and smooth and it's huge and it's got the nice gradient and all the stress that pilots used to have on launch is out of the window now i'm really happy with that and yes uh, that will make you know life so much better uh, for a SIV in Bilaspur because that used to be stressing me as well you know for uh, you know the safety of the students on the launch yeah it so was a scary you- launch and um, it was at a you know uh, you know that it was at a thermal source with you know winds coming from you know both the directions some rocks jutting out you know like hungrily looking at pilots and it was and we had a lot of incidents as well uh, other groups had like terrible you know incidents there so uh, so yeah you're right and uh, yes the, the launch is really good and you can be you know at peace at least you know on the at the launch launch uh, aspect that used to be a big uh, stressor before yeah true so that's that's good news that's that's very good for all of us so okay how is sir captain yes captain sir. hi so, captain go ahead yeah so this was one of the reasons why i was not allowed to come for siv at bilas four because the take off is around captain you don't come you are saying you come but anita is saying don't come so at least that is out of the way and i hope anita is not coming this time so we can do what we feel like yes anita are you listening so now the the take off hassle is gone and he needs a green card now for siv <laughs> okay shabat uh, you want to ask your question hey shabat hi good morning 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 uh the question is if uh, if you had a long gap like me about 2 years plus now and still counting is it okay to immediately start off with an siv or should somebody get a few flights and few hours uh, before going for an siv even if you do a basic siv again yeah i mean i would recommend you know like uh, if if you if you're excited about doing an siv then you know you come for the siv and come like 2 3 days before you know and uh, you just fly you know just do normal flying that you you know you get back to your normal uh, confident self to really get value out of i wouldn't recommend like you know you had a long gap and straight you are on an siv flight you know like well uh, of yes. course we have warm up exercises before and easy ones before but still so if you have a long gap i would really recommend that you know you come couple of days early do three four flights just to feel normal again to get your so normal confidence back you know that okay i'm feeling good i'm feeling strong i'm feeling you know uh, wow and okay i'm ready to do do stuff so so that can be done in bilaspur like is that uh, an okay site yes. to just come and fly and uh, take yes, off yes yes absolutely you absolutely you can uh, thermal there you can you know hang around in the sky for an hour couple of hours no problem and do, you know up down flights and see what's <laughs> going on when you see you know as every going on that also you know gives you a buzz and you know you, it excites you that okay you know yeah let me get ready for this stuff so so yeah surely you know come couple of days early do warm up flights and then only you know like go for it and in any case you know like uh, we go as per your progress you know as per your confidence level uh, we don't like to push anyone into doing something that they're not happy with at all uh, we go progressively uh the days of you know doing you know this exercise this exercise somehow you know instructor pa 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 okay done 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 and you don't really get value out of it it's like uh, we progress uh, we take baby steps but get the learning out of that particular maneuver and it should be thorough and precise you know you i generally in my sevi courses i make pilots do lot of visualization understand the maneuver very clearly do thorough thorough visualization and then you perform the maneuver you get maximum value out of it and you understand what happened why it happened how it happened otherwise you know if you're not comfortable and confident especially if you're not comfortable and you do maneuvers the mind doesn't really grasp you know as to what's going on or what happened you done the maneuver but the learning has not happened so so yeah we we like to warm up we like to go progressively thanks hopefully soon <laughs> okay, okay uh, so uh, 
next yeah. from uh, Ritu Ma'am. Ritu Ma'am, would you, you want to ask directly? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, the, the question was, Abhi, uh, now that you've done the SAVI course in Blaster also, Terry also, Pong Dam also, uh, which is the best place to do an SAVI? You know, how do you compare them? Uh, what are the advantages of doing it in one place than the other, you know, in terms of uh, the amount of time you get, uh, et cetera, et cetera, you know? Yeah. So uh, you're asking uh, how do you compare different SIV sites? How do you compare like, you know, winch launch and hill launch? And what are the advantages and disadvantages of both? Okay. So uh, the first and big advantage using a winch is that you save a lot of time in terms of, you know, traveling to the takeoff and then launching and then spending all that time, you know, coming towards the box. So winch has that advantage. In Janfeb, you know, I did a lot of winch SIVs. So the winch was like next to the water body and the guy, you know, like comes up good 1500, 2000 feet even and is directly on the, on the box. So there's no wasting of time. I guide the person for maneuvers and the person can land next to me and I give the debrief and the briefing for the next one the Jeep comes and takes him in two minutes to the launch again. So you can do more with the winch. You can achieve more because you save a lot of time of traveling to the takeoff and all that launching nervousness, et cetera, is kind of cleared off in a big way. And you can get instant, you know, uh, debrief and briefing again, you know, quickly for uh, your next uh, maneuver, next flight. And immediately, you know, you're, ready to launch again. So in those terms, it is really helpful. Uh, so that's the basic, uh, you know, uh, advantage I see with the winch that you save time and you save, uh, and you can do more flights. Other than that, about, once you come over the box with whatever altitude, it's, you know, the same, same, same thing. I remember you telling me that, you know, in Terry, you come really high over the, over the lake and, uh, does that compensate? I mean, that you may be a bit lower, but you can have more flights and things. I mean, which one works out better in terms of the height or in terms of the number of launches? Uh, both actually, because in good conditions, uh, we were laying out like, you know, about uh, sometimes even two kilometer of uh, the line. And sometimes we used to go so high. So in good conditions, you can get really high. I mean, I had to make people, you know, like, lose height for me to start the maneuvers. Uh, so height is not an issue with winch. You can achieve a lot of good height, but of course, you know, you should have the enough runway length right. to lay out the line to get that height, which is easy. If you have the proper winch and proper runway length, you achieve really good height, not a limitation at all. And the same time, you know, even in Bilaspur, uh, the second flights, which are at noon time, pilots take off, gain some height, Again, they are like super high uh, because the conditions are such and I have to ask them to lose height to begin to do a service because I can't see them. But I can't see their hands, you know, like clearly for a, for a, for a proper exercise. Right. So, yeah, I mean, there are advantages uh, with the winch. If you have the right, uh, proper runway length and a good winch, you get good height also and you get more number of flights also. Whereas in the other one, you are dependent, you know, on uh, weather conditions, uh, wind conditions. So that dependency is taken away. We can start really early as well, you know, on a, on a winch. Early morning, really early morning, we can start. Like in Belaspur, right. early morning, we have total undercast uh, valley. But um, yeah. uh, not so, you know, like uh, we can like start at 6.30, you know, Pabam we go. And it's nice and calm and, you know. Another advantage is that uh, if it's a flat area, then there are no, you know, uh, valley winds, etc., playing a, you know, a role in that, or catabatic winds in the evening. So, all that is also taken care of. It's more uh, predictable kind of airspace. So, right. yeah, these advantages are there. Thanks. But we may not be able to do winch because there has been a change in, you know, Machal. Uh, I don't know if we'll have access to the winch and, you know, be able to do it in Dam. So, we might be back to Bilaspur. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Amit. 
Welcome, sir. Okay, Nina. Yeah. Uh, any more question, guys? You can ask directly. We also have a uh, Avi Vanik and KK. If they want to share their experience, uh, okay. Avi, KK is KK here. Hi, hi, Avi. This is KK. Hi, KK. So, uh, if, if there are no questions, uh, but you can ask questions, we will continue with the question and answer session. I would like to invite KK to you know share uh, an experience that he had while he was doing cross country flying, just to for everyone to be able to relate, you know, the, the, the connection between, you know, SIVs and, you know, how it helps you in your flying, that you can come across challenging situations. It can happen. So, uh, KK, you want to share? Uh, I'll share, Avi, but first a question. Uh, I'm okay, sorry, to go ahead. Ask that first, okay? Uh, the thing is, uh, when we do an SIV and when we go into a real world uh, simulation, like flying out in the big air, uh, yeah, it is very different from what we are doing in an SIV, you know, I mean, uh, right from the stalls, I mean, the collapses, the deflations, everything is very different. And uh, because you've done an SIV, you tend to think that, you know, I can uh, overcome this, you know, I can do it. What is that defining line which tells you that, no, you can't do it anymore? Is it like... You know, because you have got so much of anxiety and you got so much of adrenaline that maybe your decisions are very good or maybe sometimes your decisions are not so clear, you know, what you're doing in the air. But that thought that you've done an SIV and you should be able to control it because the last thing in our mind, you know, in the big mountains is to throw the reserve. You know, you don't just want to throw the reserve anywhere. You first want to get out of your glider. So how do you deal with that uh, mental anxiety or that overconfidence i would put it both ways okay so uh, whatever i i'll just repeat what i think i understood yeah. from your question because yeah. it was really gobbled you know in between yeah. uh, what you're asking is that you know uh, since you've done an siv course or maybe a few siv courses yeah. uh, and you get into a you know a situation where you know your glider is like in a messy kind of a configuration, then uh, because you've done an SIV, you might, you know, go, you might take a decision to just sort it out yeah. and not choose to deploy, yeah. whereas that might be a better option. Yeah. Is that right? That might be a better option or might not be a better option because what I'm yes. saying is at that point in time, our mind is not very clear. We are too focused on the uh, the situation that we are in. So how do we yes. organize our brain at that time? That that is my question. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Uh, just a moment, uh, somebody's at the door. Sure. Okay. So I'll just uh, share with everyone as to what you know, like what happens, uh, you know, with the brain. This is something very interesting to understand. So. So what happens is when uh, we perceive threat, okay, when we perceive danger or when we perceive any threat to life, a uh, whole lot of chemicals start to, you know, uh, explode in a, in, a, in, a, in a body and brain, okay? So when I get into a situation which is scary, okay, when I get into a situation which is scary, which is like, oh my God, oh fuck, what happened? You know, and I perceive, you know, threat. This, all this happens, you know, in nanoseconds. Yes. I see threat, I see, f and, the, and the body responds to a threat through fear. Okay, I'm scared. Okay, so how does the physiological uh, sequences happen? The moment I sense fear because of any threat, the heartbeat starts to go ballistic. Boom, 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 boom. Now, this is a mechanism that is inbuilt in us. The fight or flight uh, mechanism that is there, you know, from, from ancient times, where you see a tiger and your heart goes fast and 
the heart beats fast to send the blood to the brain and to the limbs for it to get ready to either fight the tiger or just to run from the tiger right similar thing happens when we are in the air but it is not so useful uh, but we carry this old system you know yeah so in the air we want the brain to be working but uh, when we perceive threat and there is fear and the heart starts to beat fast there are chemicals that are released like adrenaline and cortisol into our brain these are stress chemicals that are right. released into our brain and they flood the brain and the brain's capacity to function to access short term and even long term memory is cut off so you all may have heard of uh, an accident where you know the guy had a collapse the glider started to turn and it went into a rotation and the pilot did nothing although this was an experienced pilot so what has happened is that the guy had a collapse the pilot had a collapse he is not probably seen a collapse in his life and the glider has dived of course and started to rotate he has not seen such a thing he has not seen the glider collapse and dive like this then the glider starts to rotate he has not seen such speeds on a glider in his life before number 2 and number 3 uh, the g forces that start to kick in he has never experienced them so of course it's a threatening situation the blood is pumping all the stress chemicals are flooding the brain and this is what we call the pilot froze right. the pilot froze because uh, it is too new for him the whole scenario right. and there's too much chemicals in the brain to access a simple information that put opposite weight opposite break which he might know after landing let us say he lands or she lands safely and people ask him like why didn't you do this and he said oh my god yeah i could have simply put weight shift on the other side and i could have just countered with a little break i could have gotten out of it in fact i've done sav also so you see what happens this is what happens physiologically to the body now right. where does an sav help now if i have done collapses for example i've done normal collapses i've done speed bar accelerated collapses and i have done recoveries on you know instructor's command i've also done it in my own time like we ask you in sav now do it on your own you do a massive collapse you allow the rotation and then you counter it so now when it happens in real life situation where i'm flying and i get a collapse i recognize what is happening i know what to do right we end the the heartbeat is not so fast and the chemicals are not in that uh, measure is much lesser and the yeah. brain is allowed to function and this is yeah. why we do savs that we recognize the situations so that the brain can take good decision which may be okay is looking out of control i don't have height pa 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 i throw right or i have height let me try it and then oh no now is time to deploy so what we want is that my brain functions right. to free my brain from freezing and that is why we do sav course so that in case we get a situation we can recognize and we can take a decision either right. to control or to deploy right and Fine. i think with an siv we also get uh, you know what we call jhatka in a very colloquial manner when we are in the air and you get the sudden when you are in the air and you get a sudden uh, deflation you you know that whole thing that comes to your mouth you get used to that thing in an siv because you're getting used to those forces of uh, suddenly following into following into your harness on one side and so it just starts uh, preparing you for those forces also so uh, because uh, i'll share with you now uh, how we basically met also uh, i was flying uh, an xc with you and mark and b and we were somewhere around uh, just a moment kk yeah, yeah. can you just check your uh, you know connections and uh, volume people are not able to hear you very clearly 
Okay, just hang, give me one second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Avi, sir, we can hear him. Like I don't know about others. Yeah, Avi, I guess it's about. Uh, yeah, it's about you. Yeah, your connection, connection is breaking. Is sorry. I guess it's your connection. We can hear him clearly. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Ah, uh, one second, guys. Is it better now? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. You guys can hear me. Yes, Chiki. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Uh, so uh, where we met was in uh, Bead. Now I I had been wanting to do my SIV for almost two years, but uh, one reason or another I was not connecting to an instructor, or my SIV courses were getting cancelled out. Uh, uh, so uh, it was me and Avi and uh, a friend Mark. We were flying towards uh, Dharamshala, somewhere between Palampur and uh, Dharamshala. Uh, I was a little low, and I had these collapses uh, where the dry, the glider really started diving very strong in front of me. You know, and uh, the, my reaction was as to uh, I had never done an SIV course before that, so my reaction to that was that you know I have to immediately break my dive forward. But what I did not know that I have to let go of my brakes. very fast very swiftly after that and instead what i was doing was i was letting go of my brakes slowly you know just like i was trying to be in rhythm with my glider which was very wrong because every time it was getting out of the dive it was going and kind of you know stalling a bit at my back and then again you know coming out so in the evening when we came back and i spoke to avi about this whole thing he told me like uh, what it is like the brake control what we say about releasing a brake how we release a brake so uh, what i'm trying to tell here is that it's very important to do an siv for a very simple reason that uh, we may be knowing the right reactions but how to execute those reactions in the right manner is uh, very different uh, am i right away absolutely absolutely yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we can do. I mean, I used to uh, honestly. I had done like seventy, eighty percent of my SIV course on my own, which I do not recommend over beard itself. Before I did with the professional like Avi, I did pretty fine. But a lot of reactions that you develop to, uh, on your own, they are wrong reactions. One very another wrong thing with the which Avi and team checked on me when I was taking off at Bilaspur was that. i fly with a lot of break you know that even that extra 3 or 4 cm of break that makes such a huge difference in the way your glider flies so to do an siv you know we also need to pay attention to these uh, small small uh, uh, details that's where an instructor comes into the picture which we can never do on our own so and i feel an siv is not just about uh, you know going doing the collapses over the air or something it's about understanding those very fine uh, uh response of responses of your glider to those very subtle inputs because they make a lot of difference i mean after many years of flying i now start honestly i have now started uh, understanding my glider after 400 hours as to how really a uh, glider responds to your inputs i am a slow learner but this is like now when you know you really start understanding what your uh, instructor has been telling you all along so all these psychological things all these physical attributes in your flying they play a very big role to which we need to build on step by step by step and we really need to pay a lot of attention to all these things yeah hello thank you kk nasa calling to earth <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh Nina, do we have more questions? Uh no. Okay. So what I wanted to share that uh, you know just uh, reading somewhere uh main cause of uh, accidents in paragliding. Uh, do you know what is the main cause or like you know top causes you know for accidents in paragliding? so we used to think you know that the main cause is you know pilots flying uh, beyond their level flying in conditions that is beyond their level and that is the main cause of the accidents 
actually there was a study done you know in france and uh, it was surprising uh, what the study came out with the first top reason for paragliding accidents is asymmetric collapse and getting into rotation now this one is uh, dangerous if you don't have altitude okay and it is a basic thing it is a basic thing to know how to deal with collapses when you are doing cross country flight so this work came out to be the number one cause uh, of accidents in paragliding asymmetric collapse and getting into a rotation okay which is what i focus really a lot you know in sav course that pilots understand the dynamics of their glider when they get a collapse and how easy it is uh, to control it it is demonstrated again and again with several you know asymmetric collapse practice number two cause for accidents was spinning the glider which is in cases of you know you are thermaling you got too many too much brakes on and then you apply one more and boom you are into a spin or number 2 you are coming in for landing and you slow down the glider because of you know the situation of the landing area and then you want to turn and boom you spun the glider this is very common and this is happening because pilots really good pilots don't know the stall and the spin point of their gliders most pilots are flying between uh, 10 to 20% of their brake range here the whole flying is happening here whereas you have 0 to 100 uh, you can play with the full range when when required and more importantly you need to know what is my stall point and what is my spin point uh in fact there was a a a, a paragliding world cup uh, going on you know and there was one pilot who's an acro star globally uh, who was you know uh, uh, turned turn the glider he had a lot of brakes and then he spun his glider and uh, it was found out that this particular glider he must have done like i don't know how many stalls and spins this particular glider he didn't know the spin point with so much of experience he didn't know the spin point of this particular glider okay it can be different that is why we suggest like you change a glider you need to know you know the stall point and spin point of your glider number two thing i want to say is that most of these exercises you can you know all in fact almost all the sav exercises you can first practice them on ground on flat ground and on a gentle slope you can find out your stall point your spin point on ground itself but you need to know these things like i said number 2 main reason for accidents in paragliding spinning your glider not knowing where your spin point is okay uh, and the third one is actually landings where people uh, don't really assess the landing area properly they follow others you know in that landing area and uh, uh, like i said you come down on brakes you don't know you're still turning and you know generally spin uh, we saw one accident uh, for example in bali uh, we used to come for top landings and there is this she's coming you know over the land, uh, landing take off area and then you know she's slowing down the glider she doesn't know the stall point like when she's mushing doesn't know the stall point and boom she goes beyond the stall point and boom from 10 feet and she cannot move and the ambulance had to take her and it was quite a serious kind of an accident so these are so the main cause actually uh, for accidents in paragliding is pilots not knowing the fundamentals now this is the main cause so if you were to ask me for this session to you know conclude and give you you know uh, the seriously most important keys to stay safe in this sport these will be uh, number 1 uh, ground handling number 2 sivs and number 3 uh, managing your launches if you focus on practicing your launches you do a lot of ground handling you do sivs you are safe in this sport
you can excel in this sport. And if there is one maneuver that you should go after like anything is wing over. If you can do nice, deep, controlled, symmetrical, beautiful looking wing overs, you can call yourself a good pilot. You can thermal, you can go 100, 200 kilometers, you can go into acro flying, you will forever be safe in terms of understanding of glider behavior and controlling your glider. If you can do good, deep, symmetrical, beautiful wing overs. So launch, crack that, uh, two lot of ground handling, do SIVs and wing overs. If you sort out these four, you will fly forever and you will be safe and you will excel. You will not have accidents. The safety threshold will be super high. So this is what I would like to you know, share with you with all my experience in this sport that work on your launches. Don't do ground handling only on the flat ground, but on a slope. So, and in different wind conditions, weak wind, strong wind, reverse launch, forward launch, cobra launch, just crack your launches. Make that as number one priority. Number two, a lot of ground handling, which you need to do for cracking the launches. Do a lot of SIVs whenever you can. It's, it's fun sport. And number three, wing overs. This one maneuver you should go after. Okay. Uh, what, if a pilot can do good wing overs, he understand the glider behavior in roll, pitch, yo, understand the energy of the glider, understand how to control the energy of the glider, and you will manage yourself in, you know, all kinds. Yeah. Abhi, I guess, Abhi, we, we can't hear you. Nina? Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, you, we missed the last part you said. You're not able to. Come again? Which okay. one? Uh, Which the last one? part after the bingo. Yeah, I was saying that, you know, if a pilot can do good, deep, symmetrical, beautiful wing overs, the pilot understands the glider behavior in a roll, pitch, and yaw, all the three axes. The pilot also understands how the energy is built and how the energy depletes in a glider and understands how to control the energy of the glider. So you will be able to manage any kind of situation in your cross country flying. And if you go into acro, you will understand glider. So this is one maneuver I'd like to, you know, uh, tell pilots to, you know, uh, go for, aim for. Um, so yeah, that's what I meant. Okay. Uh, any more question guys, you can ask directly. Abhi, we also have a uh, Venik and Rohit is also joined. Okay, Venik, uh, you want to share something? Or I can ask Ankush to share his SIV experience. Yes, Ankush. Yes. Should I? Do you want to share, share your fun experience about swimming? <laughs> yes. So, Please. Um, everybody can hear me clearly? Yes, Uncle. Yes, Uncle. Okay. So, actually, uh, uh, I have done my first SRV in 2009 in Nepal. So, I think uh, uh, we, some few club pilots was there, like uh, Rohit sir, Sajid sir, uh, Ristap sir. So, we went to Nepal and then uh, it was my first uh, SRV course. And... Uh, I was very excited uh, to do this course. And then when we reached, so first day we just did, did one top to bottom flight to understand the, the aerology, the takeoff, the landing area, uh, how much altitude we can get uh, over the lake uh, in the manure box. So then uh, after, then second day we started the SRV course. So first day we did uh, like normal uh, maneuvers like collapses, uh, asymmetric collapse, then be line stall, so the frontal collapse. And then second day, the plan was to do some uh, advanced stuff, like stall spin. But uh, 
before uh, on the second day of my SIV. So we are doing uh, wing overs. So I have done uh, that time uh, like 35 hours, flying hours, and then uh, that was my first SIV course. So, so uh, uh, I was doing wing overs. I have learned here also in Kamchet, but I was not doing very deep wing over. So. <clears throat> sir, Avi sir was guiding me for wing overs, and I was very happy because I was doing this wing over over the water body, and uh, I was doing deep because I was feeling more safe because I was thinking there's a water, so nothing will happen in case if I fall in the water. So that that I was uh, I was very excited to do this wing overs, and I was doing very deep wing overs. But uh, after like doing few wing overs, uh, sir was telling me you are losing height. Please come out from this manure. But actually, I was enjoying so much, so I want to continue this wing over. So I think I have done more than 10 to like 12 wing overs. And then I have realized, because I did not get that instruction for Avisa that I need to come out from that wing over. And then when I was thinking now I need to roll out, um, then I come out and then I saw I was over the water body and I was just maybe 50 to 70 feet above the water body. And I was exactly middle of the lake. And uh, <laughs> At that moment, I have realized that I don't know how to swim. And uh, I was not wearing that life jacket also. So, <laughs> so I was too scared uh, because I was going to fall in the water. And then uh, there's no choice, actually. Then sir, I, I got a few instructions from sir that sir was telling me, please uh, land close to the boat, land close to the boat. I saw two uh, people, they were coming towards me uh, in the boat. And that was like small kayak type boat. And they were paddling. There was no any machine at that time in the boats. So um, I, I, I was thinking, yeah, I don't want to land close to the boat. I want to go towards uh, the land. And it was not possible, actually. So I, I was approaching towards land. And uh, of course, I, then I, I need to land in the water only. So I think it was a really uh, wonderful landing. So I, I will not forget my landing because then I went and then I fall in the water. I did flare. Can we fall from top of me? And after landing, uh, very interesting uh, stuff happened with me that uh, uh, after landing, um, the harness also float. And I was not aware that harness also float. There's a bumper in the harness, correct? So I was like moving my hand and leg and everything because uh, um, I was too scared. And then uh, I was not going into the water. So I thought, okay, I learned how to swim. <laughs> but actually, I was not aware because Harness is there, and because of that, I am floating over the water body. And then I saw that boat was coming towards me, and they were coming really slowly. So I was abusing them, please come fast. And I was screaming, and it was really uh, shit condition for me. And then they came, and then all lines, everything stuck in my leg, in my body, and then they took me out. So it was really interesting. And then after that, I have done a few SIV in Bilaspur. But whenever I do yes, uh, go for SIV, I always wear a life jacket first. <laughs> After that, also I have fall in the in the water in Bilaspur um, because uh, uh, in Bilaspur I was doing some stall, and then uh, in that one flight I have did, uh, did I think five stall. On the fifth stall, uh, there was a cravat uh, I, both the side. I have but the second side it was too big cravat, and I was in the uh, turn. I have removed that side cover also, but I lost too much height, and I think it was not possible to uh, land on the land. But this time, I know I was wearing a life jacket, and plus the boat was there, so I exactly land close to the boat this time. So that was my story of SIV. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ankush. That's like epic uh, for the epic stories. Uh, Vanik, you want to share something? No, I just want to add to what you were saying. There's nothing called uh, too much kiting and there's nothing called too much SIV. The more you develop uh, muscle memory with uh, the wing, the better it is. There's no need to overthink this. You can do, I would say, let's say Avi is doing SIV between September 15th to September 30th. I would say don't book one batch, book two batches. Because uh, maybe the wind is strong, maybe you can't take off in certain conditions and stuff. So you give yourself an opportunity to stay in one place and keep practicing the same thing over and over again. And uh, 
do your FIV and the last day, don't stack to the instructor. Tell the instructor, hey, Avi, uh, you know, I, I'm going to do this and this maneuver. You give me a feedback. I'm going to take all the decisions in the air. I'm going to determine my book. I'm going to determine, I'm going to pull the data metric. You give me feedback when I can. Have the confidence to do it. Pop the soda bottle. <laughs> so, yeah, there's nothing called too much of uh, SIV or too much of ground management. It's all good. It'll only keep you safer and safer in the air. There is no, it's a no-brainer. We shouldn't even be discussing whether it's required or not required. We should be discussing how much of it should we be doing in a year. And I would say at the start of the year, at the start of the season, I would say at least four to five days dedicated SIV. And then at the end of the season, where you have now flown an entire season with your new skills, and now you do more complicated maneuvers. You do even more complicated maneuvers. So you do like, you hold the asymmetric and go into a dive, go into a dive, three, four turns, allow the energy to, uh, you know, feel the energy of the wing, then come out of it. So I would say, yeah, my thinking is like a distant. I'm just, I'm just saying that there's no, you cannot associate cost with safety. You cannot associate, uh, you know, cost with skill as much as you can lap it all up. And I would also say, uh, you know, twice a year, twice a year, at least 10 days, according to the book. So that's just my thought. Maybe I'm different, but uh, that's, that's, that's just my thought. No, I, I, I fully, you know, second that. And uh, uh, it is the training and it is, you know, your foundational skills that will keep you, you know, safe and give you actually freedom, you know, um, to do more in this sport. So, yeah, keep that inner child alive and, you know, have fun with your glider and get better at playing with it and, you know, knowing it better and having fun with it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, do not be scared. We go very progressively. We go as per your pace. And uh, more than, you know, the maneuvers, uh, it is understanding of yourself, your, your physiology, how you, uh, you know, uh, react in situations and uh, get better with uh, self-knowledge. Uh, which is very, very important to, you know, uh, stay safe in the sport and grow in the sport and uh, enjoy getting better at that, uh, whatever you want to do. So, yeah. So, uh, thank you very much. I think we had a lovely session and uh, we can wind up in time. If you have any questions, please feel free uh, to ask or uh, feel free to call me in case you have any questions regarding SIV or anything else, we are happy to uh, uh, support you with that. Uh, yes, Manoj. Yeah, Abhi, sir. Yeah. Uh, my question is not uh, about SIV. Yesterday, I messaged you uh, about my, one of my... Uh, I need to do the test flight from that hill. It's a training hill kind of uh, place. So, uh, I send you that peak also. So... Yes. Uh, yes. In the, in the middle of the hill, uh, the player sees something like that. Uh, the sensory effect may be there, uh, isn't it? So it's a narrow, narrow. Uh, it's a narrow down type. Uh, the middle portion is. So. Yeah. So uh, if the wind is good, then uh, uh, is it going to help me for getting leaps or uh, uh, for the sensory effect? Uh, it will be bad for soaring. So I could, uh, you know, hear you in patches, uh, but uh, I read your message and I responded to that also. Yeah. Uh, yes, if there is a little valley in between, there will be kind of some kind of entry. Yeah. So like I, you know, written in the message also, you have to go and see what's happening in different wind conditions. There will be times when you can really use it well. Yeah. Clearly, sometimes where in a particular direction you can't use the site. So you'll yeah. have to visit it with your glider with a couple of pilots. Okay. And uh, get to know it. Okay. So, pensury, the uh, pensury effect uh, may good for this uh, getting leap, right? Ninad, can you repeat what he's saying? Pensury effect can be good for getting a lift, if I heard correctly. Yeah. Well, it really depends, you know, like when, let us say, you know, take example of uh, Shellar Hill, okay? Uh, you take off and you go to the left in the valley there. When it is weak, the venture effect is advantageous, you know, because the air, uh, 
the entry is there and it creates yeah. lift and you'll only have lift there in weaker conditions when it is strong then you don't want to go there because the venturi is more effective and it can push you away so venturi can be helpful in weaker winds where it is able to create lift for you but in stronger it can be dangerous so you will have to see what's going on uh, in and around the hill to understand the aerology by going there in different conditions and checking it out and playing around and flying in different conditions to see what's actually going on yeah. okay. okay making thank sense you. manoj yeah 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 thank you yeah yeah i'll have a look on you know google earth again and yeah. uh, share more comments with you fine okay yeah fine thank you okay okay good and i yeah, said also I... it's good you know if you have, I have a training question here, abhi sir you know, practice sorry vipin here ravi sir yeah vipin go ahead please how are the timelines looking like uh, after all these lockdowns and all everything you know uh, is there any place we can go and do some practice kiting at least all of us are very very <laughs> excited to do some practice at least yeah yeah so we are hoping that uh, it will be a normal season um, okay. when the season starts like we open the season every year we are hoping that you know we'll open the season normally we are also hoping that we are able to do a savvy course we are also hoping that we are able to do discovery thermaling and cross country courses in veer as well so of course as a pilot you are always optimistic and things are looking better with the you know double vaxes and uh, opening up of you know uh, the states interstate movement is also you know increasing now so we are hoping a normal opening of a flying season both here and in the north so yeah fingers crossed but things are looking in that direction is bali is bali working bali yeah uh we don't know about bali yet uh, bali will probably like phuket has opened for tourists okay yes. bali may open you know soon uh, but there will be you know people not really uh, motivated to travel you know there is no direct flight to bali from internationally you have to go via jakarta yeah another yeah. thing is that uh, there are no direct flights yeah, i think anita knows more on this No, but vaccine passports even the european countries sure. have started the concept of vaccine passports where if you are vaccinated yeah, but, and if you go on but uh, from from the information i have got from some friends there it's not fully open uh, you can't take a direct flight in you have to go via jakarta and there are a lot of rules so it's not fully opened yet but i'm in touch and as soon as we get to know we'll inform everyone so what how much time will you guys take to decide on a program if if let's say let's say they they inform on august 10th that tourism is open will you guys be able to still uh, organize uh, do you understand the question sorry uh, what i meant is let's say on august 10th the indonesian government says okay you can anybody with vaccination can come and fly here is it possible for you guys to arrange a program if uh, if it's that late in the no it will be difficult venik yeah okay i yeah, i imagine it's too yeah. short a notice for us to make other arrangements also um i think mid july could be a cut off or something yeah right? mid july if things okay. open up and you know look good by mid july 20th july or something we can quickly you know declare that okay guys let's go let's have fun in bali and uh, go that will be yeah a treat after all this challenging time uh, yeah let's hope that this happens what about uh, this uh, restarting this flying in the south during the southwest monsoon so now we have the southwest monsoon going on and you guys used to come to yelagiri right uh, much before is there any yeah, possibility of that restarting it was a disaster yeah i mean we stopped because the time we used to get was september and uh, the oh. winds are really strong i mean uh, the last visit uh, we were there for about 20 days we couldn't open one single glider it was uh, yeah yeah mm-hmm. but uh, about yelagiri uh, we'll keep you informed if some friends of ours 
uh, from Pondi are going from pilots and they they started flying from uh, yeah please, everyone please do please do yeah it's a beautiful place yeah for me it's like uh, yeah. three hours by car I think if I if I drive I think it's two hours I think by car so yeah and Manik is a fast wind specialist huh Manik hundred kilometers faster I'm sorry. <laughs> Fastest 100 kilometer specialist, Venik. No, 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 I just want to kite the glider. <laughs> I want to kite I, the glider. I, I'm sure you will end up doing much more. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Have a beautiful, lovely Sunday. Thank right. you very sure. much. And hope to catch you soon. See you guys. Bye-bye.